Good morning and welcome to St. Ambrose. Our opening song this morning is number 717, Lift High the Cross, number 717. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. It is um, very good to have uh, Beth McElhone back at the keyboard. And... Um, just as it has been wonderful to have Shirley Keim there the last few weeks. Um, I want to say here at the beginning uh, something about Sue Chikvera. She is um, no longer here in Kalamazoo County. She's gone to uh, Chicago land to be close to her family, which was her original plan last November. Um, so she's being cared for there and uh, we're still lifting her up in prayer. Um, father Albert's father is uh, no longer in hospital, but that does, that's not because he's getting better. Um, they've gone back to their home, uh, which is some miles, some hours from Nairobi, uh, where the hospital was, is. And uh, so we're still praying also for Father Albert and his father and their family um, for, for comfort and encouragement and strength and patience and whatever they need. Well, now let us acknowledge our own need for healing and forgiveness and so prepare our hearts to hear the word of God fruitfully and to celebrate our communion in the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated <clears throat> at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. You are with us always. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory 
to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one will open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hand. of my mouth. 
In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You build up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and, are, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. So I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the neverworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples 
tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. years for some of you when you were studying about the church for confirmation. I believe that I was about 12 years old and was in the sixth grade. As an aside, I was a little out of joint because my little sister, who was only in fourth grade, was to be confirmed at the same time. I didn't understand why I had to wait two years longer, but the bishop had decided, or Rome, that they could get confirmed sooner. Well, one of the things we needed to know for surely, the bishop would ask us questions to see if we were ready. And even though our pastor, Father Leo McHale, had attested to the bishop that we were ready for confirmation. The question was though, what are the four marks of the church? I don't see very many hands up here. <laughs> there we go. The church is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. Catholic there, by the way, means universal. Well, I'm not going into all four of these marks because we don't have that much time. Monsignor has said I have to be done in about seven to eight minutes <laughs> because the toast is in. Uh, but just for today, we're going to hear the scriptural basis, and we've already heard it, for the church being apostolic. Today, in the two readings, that would be the Old Testament reading and the Gospel, we see two different kingdoms, but the emphasis is not on the kings of those kingdoms, but more upon those who carry out the daily working of those kingdoms. In the reading from Isaiah, we see that Shebna, the steward of the king of the kingdom of King Hezekiah, being relieved of his duties. Now we don't hear why too much, but earlier verses noted that Shebna was building for himself a magnificent tomb and taking pride, meaning spending money, on his chariots and other things. Because of his selfishness, looking out for himself and not the people of the kingdom, the Lord removes him from his place and summons Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and clothes him with Shebna's robe and sash, symbols of power in the kingdom. He commissions Elikiah to be father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He bestows the house of David, stating, that what he opens, no one shall shut, and what he shuts, no one shall open. Then we see today in Matthew's Gospel, we see Jesus and his disciples departing Galilee, kind of a safe place for them, and entering into the north, to the region of Caesarea Philippi, very near Gentile territory. And he asked his disciples, who do people say he is? We know the answers. We hear John the Baptist. Pretty tough since they were born about the same time, but I suppose it could have been. 
Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answers, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus tells Peter that he is blessed because no earthly person revealed this answer to him but Jesus' heavenly Father. Jesus tells Peter after this that he is rock, Petros in Greek, Peter in English. Then Jesus bestows upon Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What a tremendous gift Christ has given to all of us. If you were here for last month's homily, you heard me say the same thing. That this is a tremendous gift because we can be freed from our sins through the authority given to the church. This church, founded on the apostles, has its roots in Jesus. And his authority it is given to Peter in all of his successors. That makes the church about 2,023 years old. Not so, so for some other churches we have today that may be four or 500 years old. The doctrine of the church comes from Jesus himself and his entirety is assured. What a wonderful gift Christ gives to each of us. We are all members of an apostolic, apostolic church. Each bishop is in a direct line to one of the apostles. I don't know if Bishop Edward has bothered to chase his line back, but it's there. The church is guided by a pope, descendant of one of the apostles, since the current pope we don't know which one, but it's also an unbroken line to Peter as head of the church. All these leaders are guided by the Holy Spirit. And we are blessed to know that we are part of the true church and receive blessings through the church and Christ. You're not all asleep, say amen. Our creed both gathers us together and makes us one, and it teaches us. I would like to suggest that we pray this slowly today, and when we get to those words toward the end about the work of the Holy Spirit and the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we pray even a little slower. Let's stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident of God's mercy and love, let us bring our prayers now. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless his ministry and grant him strength to shepherd his flock. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world, may God awaken in the hearts of all faith in Christ, his Son, and grant them the freedom to worship him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women facing challenging pregnancies, may God look graciously upon them and grant them strength, hope, and a community of support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the love of Jesus be at the heart of all we say and do in service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, may the Lord in his mercy shine his eternal light upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the residents of Maui, those providing aid to them, and for all the people who are missing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in our book of intention and those calling and requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our sister diocese in Lidwar, Kenya, our sister Paris parish in Guatemala, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Sue Chikvera and Father Albert's dad, Richard, and for all the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For Louis Klein, Ed, Edward Harkenreiter, and Larry Norby, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let's call upon the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 508, Center of My Life, number 508. I will always pray. 
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, 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 peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. And only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 341, One Bread, One Body. Number 341.
The 2023-24 Religious Education School year begins on Sunday, September 10th at 10 a.m. in the Parish Hall. Come and meet your catechists and register for the new school year. Regular classes begin on Sunday, September 17th at 10 a.m. in the Parish Hall. We invite you to enjoy coffee and donuts after the 9 a.m. Mass on every Sunday that religious ed is held. The coffee does not make itself, so volunteers are needed to help with making coffee before the 9 o'clock Mass and setting up the, the other drinks and the donuts. If you can help with this, please call the office or contact Sarah or Sarah's email address is on the front of the bulletin. Thank you. The Right of Christian Initiative program begins soon. Please see the insert in this week's bulletin for fuller information. Also in that bulletin insert, you'll find information on how you can help the victims of Maui fires financially. And please hold them in your daily prayer. May God bless this week for you. I want to put a little uh, spin on the uh, invitation that we've been hearing uh, for the last few weeks to uh, uh, make use of this uh, little volunteer sheet, which you could pick up in the vestibule. It is um, invariably true that when we are personally engaged 
in some way with the church, with our parish, better things happen within us. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, It's not all for me. I don't mean me, Michael. I mean, it's, it's not all for the individual who is volunteering, but there is a great deal of benefit for the volunteer, for the person who accepts some role in the life of the parish. There really is nothing on this sheet that is um, is insignificant. Every every opportunity on here is worth something to our parish and often to um, to a, a group of people. So I'm I'm just uh, inviting you to find a place for yourself in the ministry of the church. It's wonderful that we're together on Sunday morning, uh, but this, this is another aspect of church that's very important, and not only to you, but to us. So thank you for paying attention there for a minute. Shall we stand? Let's pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth loving and serving the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our closing song is number 197, Holy God, we praise thy name.